Good morning. Bo, please tell me the equation for Newton's second law. Which one? Flippin' physics. It doesn't matter. Just pick one. Okay. Net force equals mass times acceleration, where both force and acceleration are vectors. And Billy, what is the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law? Net torque equals rotational inertia, or moment of inertia, times angular acceleration, where both torque and angular acceleration are vectors. And Bobby, what is the other equation we have for Newton's second law? Net force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time, where both force and momentum are vectors. Very nice, everybody. Now, let's say we have a rigid body with an axis of rotation, as you can see here. And let's have a ball moving toward that rigid body. The ball has r, a position vector relative to that axis of rotation of the rigid body, and the ball has linear momentum p. That is the basic setup of our example. Going back to the momentum version of Newton's second law, let's take the cross product of the position vector with that whole equation, which means we have the cross product of the ball's position vector and the net force acting on the ball equal to the cross product of the ball's position vector and the derivative of the linear momentum of the ball with respect to time. Bobby, what is the left side of that equation equal to? What is the cross product of the ball's position vector and the net force acting on the ball equal to? It equals the cross product of the ball's position vector and the derivative of the linear momentum of the ball with respect to time. <laughs> Sorry, yes, it, it equals that. Uh, I'm asking what else is it equal to? Uh, torque equals the cross product of the r position vector and force. Oh, uh, right. Uh, that means... Net torque equals the cross product of the r position vector and net force. So the left hand side of that equation equals the net force, net, net torque acting on the ball. Hold up. The r position vector is the location of the ball relative to the axis of rotation, not the net force. Yeah. Because we are treating the ball as a point particle, every force which acts on the ball acts on the center of mass of the ball and therefore acts at the location of the r position vector. Oh. Thank you, Bobby. Now, the next step is going to seem a bit strange, but just hang in there with me. I feel like this whole thing is strange. What does the ball have to do with the axis of rotation? And how can a net torque be acting on the ball around that axis of rotation? The, the ball is not touching the axis of rotation. Yeah, okay, right. So... I know this is all a bit strange, just give me a bit to make things more clear. The derivative of the position vector with respect to time equals what, class? Linear, linear velocity. velocity. And the linear velocity of the ball and the linear momentum of the ball are in the same direction. Therefore, those two vectors are parallel to one another. Therefore, the cross product of the derivative of the position vector with respect to time and the linear momentum of the ball equals what, class? I do not know. The two vectors are in the same direction. Yeah, when two vectors are in the same direction, their cross product equals zero. Oh, right. The area of the parallelogram created by the two vectors equals zero, so the cross product equals zero. Correct. That means we can add the cross product of the derivative of the position vector with respect to time and the linear momentum of the ball to the right-hand side of our net torque equation. We can add that to the equation because you can add zero to anything. Right, but why would we do that? That is a good question, Bo. Class, to what is the right-hand side of this equation now equal? Uh, I'm not sure. It uses the derivative product rule? Okay, okay. It equals the derivative with respect to time of the cross product of the r position vector and linear momentum. It does? Yeah. We just went the reverse order compared to what we usually do with the product rule. That makes sense. I see it now. Thanks. You are welcome. All right. We are almost there. Now we define angular momentum as the cross product of the position vector and linear momentum where everything is a vector. Therefore, 
Net torque equals the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time, where torque and angular momentum are vectors. Okay, but why did we do all that stuff with Newton's second law? That was to show the relationships between linear and rotational quantities. For example, torque is the rotational equivalent of force, moment of inertia or rotational inertia is the rotational equivalent of mass, Angular acceleration is the rotational equivalent of linear acceleration, and angular momentum is the rotational equivalent of linear momentum. Okay, that makes sense. But what does a three-line equal sign mean? Oh, that just means it's a definition. He said, we define angular momentum as the cross product of the position vector and linear momentum where everything is a vector. So that three line equal sign means that is the definition of angular momentum. Okay. We already worked with angular momentum. The magnitude of the angular momentum of a point particle equals the magnitude of the position vector times mass times velocity times the sine of the angle between the position vector and the velocity. Is that related to this? Linear momentum equals mass times velocity Therefore, this cross-product definition of angular momentum is the same as what you just said. Then why did we do this whole lesson? Before Mr. P just gave us the equation for the magnitude of the angular momentum of a point particle, here we actually derived it. And this cross-product cross equation for angular momentum is a vector, not a scalar, like the equation you just gave us. Cool. Thanks, everybody. The last thing I want to point out is that the rigid body does not need to be there for the moving object to have angular momentum. That's right. Even with no rigid body for the object to be moving towards, the point particle has angular momentum about the axis of rotation. But then what or where is the axis of rotation? Good question, Billy. We can define the angular momentum of a moving point particle relative to any point. We just have to decide where that point or that axis of rotation is. That is weird. Yeah. Honestly, I agree it is a bit weird, but it is true and we just derived it. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.